my, my name is Richard Hale from Battle Boards. Welcome to part three of the making the Italian boards. Uh, this part is concentrating on the specialist finishes that we're going to be providing for the board and introducing some airbrushing skills and techniques that uh, you may want to try. Uh, you can see that that, that pinky red uh, or that pinky brown um, is, is now dulled down, which is why I was saying don't be so worried about the undercolours. It's just the, the sort of um, tone that we want to change from the actual sand. I've mixed up um, a sandy colour. Um, this has got some stone dust in it, so it's got a bit of texture. And uh, I'm now going to just sort of basically dry brush that over the top of our rock work to start bringing out um, some of those highlights. And work. I'm going to use the same colour and just go over the, the actual base ground as well. Uh, and again, that will emphasise the fact that the colours are blending from one surface to another, uh, rather than mixing up a completely different colour for the sand. I'm also going to um, lightly go over the buildings as well with, the, with exactly the same colour. Uh, again, these buildings will change quite a lot uh, later on. So I've gone around the whole board now um, with my sand colour. I've done the sandy road and all the ground areas. I've also um, dry brushed the same colour across the, some of the buildings, the walls and also the, um, the sort of upper um, courtyard area as well. So it's all looking sort of like the same colour. Um, you can still see the brown coming through and now I'm going to add another dry brush on top of that which is a lot lighter. And this one I'll use uh, more sparingly uh, and mainly on the tops of the rock as if the light is hitting uh, the top of the rock and lighting it up. Um, it also is where it would get most of the sunlight um, so it would be bleached from the top and the lower section will be um, slightly darker. Now th this is white mixed into the sand colour so I'm only using a very limited um, palette range. Uh, th there's a couple of reasons for doing that for me. Um, if the client came back and wanted um, an extra few boards or an extra um, piece to go onto the board, I, I would have a good chance of matching that um, due to the fact that I control my colours. You don't need to do that, so you can have more flexibility um, if you're doing it yourself through the colours than I need to. Um, but I find that you don't need a massive amount of colours um, to make it work, you just need um, a right balance. You need, for each component, you need three three colours, three basic colours. You need a low light, a mid-tone and a highlight. The further you go on with that, the more colours you add to that. So you go four colours, five colours, six colours. You're just making it better and better and better. So it all comes down to how much time you want to spend um, adding the paint uh, to your displays or your boards. But three is the minimum. So the next process now is to airbrush. Um, I use a, a Badger 150 airbrush uh, with a small compressor. Now the small compressor has got an automatic shut off and you'll hear it purring away in the background. Now the reason why it um, seems to be struggling is because the automatic shut off will shut off when it thinks the airbrush is not in use. I bypass that system by putting uh, a regulator on it, so the regulator actually leaks air, which is the way it regulates. So the compressor gets confused about whether or not uh, it needs air or needs to deliver air, which is why you'll hear it turning on and off. You don't need uh, a compressor that um, that has an automatic shut off. What you do need is a compressor that regulates the air, so you can um, actually increase or decrease the air. Um, mine hasn't got a tank, so ideally um, if you've got a compressor with a small tank which um, acts as a reservoir, that's even better. Um, but the airbrush you can see um, I've got here is uh, not a gravity fed one, it's, it's uh, what they call suction fed, but again that, that's a, bit, a, a term which is not correct really, it's not suction at all, it's not sucking up the paint in any form. But I'll get, I'll, I can do a video showing that. So I'm going to start the compressor up now. Uh, and, and start uh, applying the paint using the airbrush. So I'm going to start applying um, the paint. The paint I've got is uh, acrylic paint, it's been watered down. 
And what I'm trying to do now is do the opposite to what I did with the highlight. The highlight was all about the sun coming down and hitting the rockwork from the top. Uh, the airbrushing is all about low lighting and shadowing. So it's the opposite way around. So I'm putting in shadows. That was uh, a raw umber I've added and now I'm going to go in with a dark uh, colour black. Um, again, just picking up the shadows where I want them to be. Getting as low as possible. Okay, so I've turned the board round and I'm just going to continue spraying in um, blacks and browns uh, into the lower section. So I've gone round with the black and the brown again and then I'm just going to pick up some of the highlights. So I'm fairly happy with the rock work now at this stage. Um, we now need to, or I need to now start thinking about the buildings. The lower buildings have already had some paint applied. Uh, so now it's a case of um, adding back in the building sections and bringing them up uh, to the same level uh, of, of paint and tonal uh, colour as, as the overall board. Um, so they can match in and obviously the roofs um, will be uh, different. Uh, this is where going back to your reference is going to help and uh, looking at the photographs and seeing how the colours change between buildings, uh, what stains are actually running and, and how, they, uh, how the actual uh, concrete work is being affected um, by the weathering. Okay, for those of you who uh, want to try airbrushing but haven't got airbrushing, uh, I said I'd um, let you in on some secrets and some tips of those uh, who, who want to do those sort of techniques without an airbrush. Uh, I've been using these which are from Model Mates. They're um, dyes, uh, sort of weathering dyes that you can spray directly onto your work. These are extremely good um, for creating an airbrush effect without actually having an airbrush. Uh, I've been using these now for several months. Um, and I've been really pleased with the effects that I've been getting. Um, they're, they're, they're very easy to use, they're just simply a spray can, they're quite small, easy to control, uh, and you can use them instead of having uh, an airbrush, so uh, that, that's, uh, I'd recommend um, looking into those. Okay, I think we're getting pretty close now to uh, um, the sort of end of this process. Uh, I'm really happy with, uh, with how it looks. Um, and how it's sort of uh, worked out. I'm just going to um, finally just spray some of this uh, Model Mate spray into the rock work as well. Sections of colour, I think is the idea. So I'm just going to go around and spray some of that in. But I think you would agree that the the overall board is uh, is looking really really nice uh, there's probably uh, I'll probably do some more tinkering with it as we go on but I think that's enough for this point now I think it's time to push the whole board back uh, and do the front boards and then balance all the four boards uh, together okay thanks very much for watching um, I hope you enjoyed the movies uh, I'm so, they're a little they are you know they do take some time to do and they're a bit clunky in places so I apologize for that uh, this is a bit new to me but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've got some really good tips from uh, from me. Uh, I will continue to um, probably make um, some more movies uh, so you can see the boards completed. Uh, the next section which is the river section has a whole load of new techniques that uh, uh, that I've not shown before so it would be interesting to see how they, uh, they look and um, catch up with me uh, on those if you can. Thanks very much for you um, for subscribing. I really appreciate those who have. Um, it's been great uh, to see some some feedback from these movies, uh, which is like I say have taken uh, have taken a bit of time to uh, put together, and so they do slow production down quite some. So uh, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>